It's the final week of the Premiership and it is all to play for as five clubs shoot it out for the final two semi-final places. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be here with you throughout the end of the season and beyond, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, a reminder, at the start of the day, Northampton at the top of the table. Sarries were in second with Bath in third and Sale fourth. Really, the key battle was Sale visiting Saracens. Uh, if Sale didn't win, then it opened up opportunities for Exeter, Exeter Quinns or Bristol. Uh, but that Sale, uh, Saracens Sale game was the real key one. However, let's look at Saints because pre-game, this is big news. They basically picked a second 15 uh, to go to Bath with, which you know gave Bath, who might still just miss out on a semi-final spot, that meant that they were in good shape to get the win. However, for Northampton, a lot of players returning from injury. Lewis Ludlam, Rory Hutchinson, Tom Pearson, Berger Odendahl. So, not just for this week, but for them going forwards as already guaranteed a semi-final place. This is great news for their squad. Uh, but the two big games, as I say, were Sarries versus Sale at the Stonex, somewhere where Sale haven't won for a long, long time, and Quinns versus Bristol. And let's just be honest, these games turned out exactly as we expected, as everybody predicted. A tight, tense affair at the Stonex, where it is physical, very tactically um, in-depth. Uh, and then Quinns versus Bristol, which was a thrill a minute. And literally in the first minute, Williams for Bristol getting over in the corner, you know, for 7-0 right off the get-go. Bristol were running absolutely everything as they have started to do in the last sort of month, two months of this season, going right back to their DNA. But what comes with that is sometimes errors. And Charlie Cullum South got over for an absolute beauty of a try for Harlequins, who were also playing some cracking stuff. Ellis Genge with some fantastic feat to dummy about three players and trot in underposed for 7-14. And then Genge again looked like he scored another beauty after his own searing break through the middle. But Harry Thacker was uh, judged to have held on or rolled over or something like that. So that try wasn't given. But Alex Dombrant got over from a mall try shortly afterwards. And at 14-14, this was playing out exactly as everybody expected. Probably a few more errors from each team. Um, maybe a bit of nerves, I'm not sure, but the ambition certainly would always potentially cause some errors as well. Back at the Stonex at this point, it was 0-0. It had been tense and physical and, yeah, very much based on territory, as we expected. Neither team wanted to give an inch. And in the early phases, and actually it turned out throughout most of the game, Sale had the edge in quite a few areas. Physicality being the key one. I think they just dominated Saracens physically their bigger players stood up and some of the Saracens players had very very quiet games by their standards uh, and Sale got the break uh, Tom Roebuck who had a really good game throughout actually very dangerous on the ball really good at retrieving kicks I think he could be um, not a bolter for England squad selection this summer but I think he, he's got a good chance uh, he scored the try for 7-0 Sarries hit back almost immediately with a penalty for 3-7. But like I said, Saracens were really not looking themselves. I said in the prep build-up to this game that Sarries hadn't looked ominous for a long time, but last week's win at Bristol made them look ominous. Well, that's gone again. Uh, up until this point, certainly, they were looking very, very fallible. A uh, quick run around the grounds. Leicester, Exeter and Faye Waboso had banged over for a try, as he's uh, wanting to do for 7-0 to Exeter early in that game. But Leicester came searing back with a penalty and then tries from Hassel Collins and Jack Van Port to lead 17-7. And at this point, if Exeter had a chance, then they are going to need to come back a long way in this game. Down at Bath and, as expected, uh, given the team sheets that were um, selected, Josh Bayless got over from a try, basically from a pushover scrum, which you really don't see too often anymore. Those normally end up in a penalty or some other outcome, but a pushover scrum, try for Josh Bayliss, and then another try, who I don't seem to have written down the scorer for, and a penalty for 17-0, and Bath looking very comfortable there. Back at Quinns and Ibitoy. 
uh, scored a try. And this was actually from a Quinn's error. Chandler Cullen South took the ball to the line, tried to pull the ball back out to Marcus Smith. It was just kind of half in his reach, half out. Marcus threw a hand out at it and then took it back away again. The ball bounced between two Quinn's players. Ibatoy on it like a flash for a 21-14 lead. Um, and then, again, Bristol just playing from absolutely everywhere. They made an incredible break, the full length of the pitch, but then knocked it on. And Quinn's, with all that, you know, their talent and their ability to play loose, also have <clears throat> some real s- sort of strength and guts to their game as well. So they want a scrum pen followed by a line out pen and then an amazing kick to the corner from Marcus Smith, which, you know, a long 40 odd metre kick left it five metres out. But Bristol defended it well, managed to sack that ball, get it down um, to defend their line. So some guts from Bristol there as well. Also through the first half, there were some key injuries. Uh, Callum Sheedy went off having, uh, you know, a very innocuous thing, just planted his foot, nobody near him, and had to go off for that. And Ellis Gange also off, which left it 14-21 at half time to Bristol. But like I say, those key injuries, oh, Bernard Jansi van Rensburg also off early in that game. So Bristol with some key injuries and a seven-point lead, which is obviously nothing against Quinns, looked very much up for debate in the second half. Back to the Stonex and Sale were dominating the scrum. This was a big factor. In a tight game like this, if you can get a nudge, win penalties, an advantage at the scrum, it's huge. And Sale were absolutely doing that. Then Saracen's got a lifeline. Five metre line out to Saris. A really strange call by them. They went for a five man line out, which you almost never see. Maybe hoping to catch Sale cold like that. They called a really difficult ball to the middle. Um, George missed his man. I think maybe um, uh, maybe the jumper didn't quite get up as high as he needed to as well. It went straight to Luke Cameron Dickey, over the line, slamming the ball down. But the replay showed that he'd actually dropped it and then his hand um, landed on top of the ball just before it hit the line. And according to the laws, that's not a try. I mean, to everybody, I think this does look like a try, but he never regathered the ball. Um, He's only sort of slapped it down and it has gone forward previously. So um, I think it is the correct call according to the laws, but maybe that's one that needs to be looked at because to all intents and purposes, it does look like a try or it does look like it should be a try. Um, However, Sale, as I mentioned, the scrum dominance, that scrum got them another penalty for 10-3 at half time. And really, Saris hadn't particularly fired a shot. They looked a little bit stunned. They looked low energy. The Stone Age crime was tight, uh, really, really quiet. And it was definitely Sale doing everything they needed to at that point and could have been further ahead. Back at the uh, Mattioli Woods, Welford Road, and a penalty from each time left it, each side left it 20 10 to Leicester at the break there. A long way back for Exeter, but they are capable of scoring in bunches. So chances for them, but they need to have a good second half. And down at uh, Bath, it was 17-0, but John Rahm got a try back just before half time. And you sense maybe, just maybe, that could be enough to get Northampton back in the game. They always play with this sort of confidence and this effervescence. And maybe that one try could have got them back. Um, at that point, we didn't know. <clears throat> Okay, so half time, and the table looks like this Saints, Bath, Saracens with their losing bonus point, keeping them in third above Sale in fourth. Now, importantly, there was um, the Quinns Bristol game and had quite a few injuries and stoppages, so they were by far the last one to kick off. So if Saris could get ahead at Sale, then we might have some real drama there in the last few minutes to see who joined uh, them in the quarterfinals. Okay, into the second halves and down at the Stonex. Saracens look to sort out their scrum problems by bringing on Riccioni for judge. And it did a really good job of that, actually. Um, But Sale just continued to make the most of the pressure that they were creating. They knocked over a penalty. And then from, looked like a bit of an aimless kick down the middle, just trying to put the ball back in Saracens' uh, uh, territory. But a really nasty bounce led to an error and Rob the Pre scooted over and that's now th- 20 points to three. And as I said, Saris really hadn't fired a shot. So it is very hard to see how they had any chance of getting back into the game at this point. 
Down at Quinn's, Harry Thacker's over for a try from a driving mall and Bristol get a scrum penalty as well soon afterwards. So all that kind of guts that I talked about Quinn's having in the first half had just started to melt away a little bit and it was Will Collier who got really crunched up in that scrum which led to the penalty. His last game at home for Quinn's. But Quinn's did come back. Luke Northmore getting over for a try, he juggled it. He looked like he was going to drop it about a thousand times before he eventually gathered it and scored. And Chandler Cunningham South with some brutish power in the tight quarters to get over as well. And at this point, Quinns were leading 28-26, but both teams with the bonus point. So they, at that point, would have been like, wow, this is right on here. Just needing Saracens to come back at home, as everybody thought they would. Everybody thought Saracens were going to beat Sale at home. Um, and yeah, they'll be right in the game. Down at Leicester, and Tommy Rafaela got over for a try, and there was another try shortly after from that as well. So at 34-10, this surely was it for Chiefs. Surely their season's over. They've done really well. You know, all this chat about potential still being going on, but they got a try back. And then Jasper Visa was red-carded, and they scored another try. So now, 34-22, and sort of 15, 20 minutes to go. Could they potentially come back and, and get this the win? And again, they needed Saracens to still beat Sale. Could they? Who knows? But that's a, they looked at down and out and they've now got a chance. Just two tr- converted tries to get ahead in that game. Up Bath, uh, there was been tries by Tom Dunn from a driving mall and Ben Spencer with a intercept. Really beautifully read from Spencer. My favourite scrum half, as most of you know. And that bonus point for Bath, that secured them their semi-final place. So that was job done as far as they were concerned. At Quinns, the Bristol scrum becoming dominant. And as I mentioned earlier, and that got them a penalty for 29-28. And then they flew. They absolutely flew. Max Lahif over for his customary try in recent weeks. Uh, Another penalty up to 39-28. Noah Heward with a length of the field absolute blast. Gabriel Ogre over. And uh, at 53-28, I mean, uh, Bristol could not have done any more. <clears throat> especially, as I say, with those injuries that they got to key, key players. Um, they've come out and absolutely flagged uh, Quinns in that second half. Now, I just want to say, after 80 minutes, Quinns win a penalty. They're losing 28-53. There is nothing for them to play for here, like in terms of match points, in terms of anything. Yet they still kicked that penalty to touch and wanted to play. I mean, this says a lot about the Harlequins team and their relationship with their fans, I would say. They want to entertain, they want to go out, and they realised this was their last play of the season. It would have been so un to just tap the ball and kick it into touch and say, OK, we'll take that defeat. So, fair play to them, really staying true to their DNA, it, despite, you know, horrible circumstances in terms of the scoreline. Back to Leicester, and that potential Exeter uh, reprieve was gone. Two penalties late in the game from... Tigers to take a 40-22 win. I said before the game that they really probably wanted to end with a big performance for their fans after a disappointing season. They got that job done. Well done, Leicester. Unlucky Exeter. A great season and much more to come from them in future years. Down at the wreck, um, late tries from Barbary for Bath and Tom Seabrook for Northampton. Left it 43-12 at the end. Uh, Solid win for Bath against Northampton 2s. Both teams off into the semi-finals in good shape. But it was Saracens. It was at the Stonex. And would there be any late drama? Saracens emptied the bench with about 15 minutes to go. And Theo Dan has just been electric this second half of the season. Uh, Actually, probably for the whole season, to be honest. And he scorched through uh, the midfield. It was probably Saracen's first real bit of genuinely class attack in play, which led to the Riccioni try. 10-20 with about 10 minutes to go, but Saracen's kept making errors. Sale kept just putting the pressure on and staying out of their own territory. And the game just fizzled out. I mean, it was such a weird thing to, to sort of witness that that Saracen's team, that era, all those players just kind of fell to the ground at the end. And most importantly, no losing bonus point either, which means that Sale ended up third and Saracens ended up fourth. And that is massively important when you look at the semi-final matchups. All right, so 
Not huge, huge drama at the end here. Not teams, you know, moving all around in the league positions that we hope for as a neutral anyway. That always makes for a lot of fun. But uh, some really good games, a lot of great tries in the end of the regular season in the Premiership, which has been an absolute belter. Semi-finals coming up in a couple of weeks' time uh, with Saints versus Saracens. How many times have Saints played amazingly well throughout the season and then Saracens have just smashed them in the playoffs? Oh, God, I'd be devastated if that happens again. Nothing against Saris. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of what they've done over the years, but this Saints team are amazing, and I think they really deserve to make that final at the very least. And then Bath versus Sale. Sale, the late charges in this semi-final race, won four, five, six games in a row. I've lost count, actually, how many games they've won, but they're going to have to keep this run going, and they're going to have to do it at Bath, which is going to be a tough place for them to go. What's going to count in those semi-finals? I mean, injuries, form, Manitoulangi went off for sale today, but they, that made no difference really to their game today. On any case, <clears throat> excuse me, they were still excellent with Sam James coming on and proving what a quality player he is. Um, in terms of form, I don't think the defeat, the Saints' defeat will mean any difference to them whatsoever. They'll get their starting team back together. They'll sort that out and they'll carry on. The Saracens form is a worrying one. That was a poor display by them today. Really poor. Will they be able to turn that round and get a big performance to maybe finish strong at the end of this season? And Bath, well, they're coming back as well with a lot of their big players returning. That's what I think. Semi-finals are the next thing coming up in the domestic season. But let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? Were there any other big turning points in these fixtures that I missed that you think were important? What do you think about going into the semi-finals? Which teams are going to stand the best chance? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Uh, and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.